Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. So this is the uh, the power up. I've got my um, power supply already pre-set up because that's what we're going to be doing here. What we're going to do from this because we need a dual power supply so we need a positive 30 volts, 33 to 35 volts and the negative. That's so what I've got here is I've got my negative from this side and the positive from this side. Um, they're connected together, you can't even see that, that's ridiculous. So they're connected together like this, and this will give us our zero volts. And then we have our negative side, which is in this instance going to go on the back of this because that's where my power rails are. You've got one here and the other one on the other side here for the positive. That's got us connected up for power. I've put this thing into a synchronous mode. And let me just check the backs of that again. Um, I've been over, I did find a mistake, and the mistake is a quite visible one. If you were to look back at the other video. And that is that this here was actually coming down Oh, crying out loud. This here was actually coming down from the base, the wrong side of the resistor there. Yeah, so it was coming down to um, the wrong side of the, the resistor. And uh, what that meant was that I was getting quite a lot of voltage on the output there, which is no good. So I corrected that. And uh, so what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to start applying voltage to this and keep an eye on the power supply and if we see the current rising too quickly, uh, we know that we got an issue. So I'll start this off uh, with both those channels going on, and then I'm going to start just raising this voltage up. So we got one volt, two volt, three, four. We should now start seeing that the current going up too high, if that's the case. So about 20 volts I'll do. And as you can see, the current's not really doing a lot. So we can pretty much say that we don't have any type of short circuit or anything like that, which is, you know, that's exactly what we want. Um, now, our next test, because it's going to be done in stages like this, um, we need to have a little look and see what we got on the output here. And what we don't want to see is too much voltage. So in actual fact, it's because I was just going to leave those and we can use this one. Because we want it in the millivolt range. And we just want to see what's going on on that, um, on that output. And we're looking for DC at this stage. So it says 17 millivolts. And if we were to go down like this to zero, you watch those millivolts go up. Can you see that over there? Let's bring that a little bit closer. So those millivolts go up and as we raise up to our desired voltage we see the millivolts go down and as we go up towards 30 as I'm pretty confident now there's nothing wrong with it uh, we're good there okay so that's good that's a good sign I'm going to wind it back down again like it's nice to do this now you can do this if you're using a transformer and your capacitors um, because uh, this is my speaker output, by the way. This is to ensure that these uh, these two wires never touch together, because if they do, it's going to you know bust up the transistors, and that won't be any good at all. Now, so um, we know that there's no big issue going on there, and now what we want what we want to do is just look for some. Okay, we want to switch that thing on. We want to look for any dodgy noises on the output. So for that we need an input and we also need a speaker. So what I've done is I've just made, I've used XT60 connectors because you know I've got quite a few of those from the old uh, drone stuff. Uh, let me just switch this off for a minute, just want to make this connection. We got that from the drone stuff and um, it doesn't look like I can do much more with these types of drones anyway. This I got off in the middle of nowhere. And as I don't have a, a, a vehicle at the moment, that's not going to be happening anytime soon. Just check those connections are still on the back there. And so we got our speaker connected. It's going into a six ohm speaker, which is okay, because this is four to eight ohm 
um, amplifier and I'm just going to connect up here because here is where I'm going to be putting my inputs into this rather than do it before where I was just soldering onto the capacitor I've put actually little connectors on these times this time so there we go there and we have if I just get rid of that for the moment I don't need that uh, and we have on the um, signal generator we have our uh, waveform generator we have um, uh, it's four millivolts peak to peak so that's nothing at the moment but if we just put the output on there I'll just turn this amp on we're going to start winding up that voltage again I don't know if you can hear it already we've got a nice audible tone there if I just go into my amplitude oh, no more. Get to amplitude and start turning that up Yeah, doesn't seem to be anything wrong with that at all. That sounds quite nice and healthy. Just back that off and turn that off. We can turn that off again. So that's part two um, of that. Let's wind that down. So I'm just going to disconnect this anyway. Because I don't need this on here now. It is a little bit of a heavy duty connector, but mm. I prefer it to be nice and um, you know stable like that than than not. So I'm quite satisfied that that's okay. So now we want to check the bias current. Um, and what we're going to do there? Ah, oh, do you know? I, I don't know whether it wants me to put in uh, a signal going in. I don't see why that's going to make any difference at this stage uh, because we know that we don't have. Uh, high millivolts on here because we've already tried that and even if I turn it up well, we saw what happened it went down to about 16 millivolts didn't it maybe they're talking about if you've got an output signal so okay let's just let's just do that anyway all right we just pop this in here because this is the negative out and the other side's the positive we can just drop those in there like that uh, we can see on there on the DC no power on We're way below so we just put that power back on again. Turn this up. Yeah, and what we're looking for is our millivolt output on there. And there's nothing. You know, nothing to be concerned about. We go full blast. There's nothing to be concerned about there, really. But why about if we put that output on? <laughs> we don't have any sound, but we can see there that we still don't have a problem with it going up very high. We don't have any sound because the speaker's not connected. All right, so we can turn that back off again. I'm just gonna wind that back down again because I just like the idea of just driving it up slowly. It's only because I, even though I'm pretty confident everything's okay, I still get scared that something's gonna go wrong. Okay, so now we, what we wanna be able to do is we wanna be able to go between the collectors of both these transistors. And we wanna make sure that we can get our our uh, bias current up. Now what I normally do is with these is I look at the current that's being pulled off here and I tend to go up to around about sort of like 50 milliamps uh, both sides and then check and just see where we're at and then just take it up a little bit because then I can watch what's going on which is what I prefer to do. So I'm going to do it like that. I'm going to take it up to the up to its highest that I can take it to which is 32 volts. Now on your you know, when you're using a 24 volt battery, you can get 36 volts um, aside. And so it would have to be set a little bit lower. But that's the sort of thing you can do, um, you know, once, you, once you've got it, once you, if you're setting it up on your bench with it, and you, know, you can do that because you can just put a meter in series with one of the sides and you can keep an eye on what's going on with it because this sets both sides. So we can see at the moment, now, this is going to take a little bit of time to warm up, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to speed up that warm up process. I'm just going to take this up higher. Okay. And I'm going to get it on about 65, 70. That'll do. Um, because it's on a little bit higher, that means that the whole process of it just warming up and getting those transistors warmed up. I don't know if you can see the little green lights on. You can barely see it, can you? You're not, then I mean, it's not supposed to be a big bright light. Then no, no, I push the cam. It's not supposed to be a big bright light. What it's supposed to do is, uh, 
it, it's there because it's allowing um, a certain amount of voltage across it because it's the green light. And it also using that 22K resistor only lets about one and a half amps, milliamps through. That's why it's very dim. But as you can see, look from the uh, power supply, you can see that that uh, current is raising. So as it gets, as it warms up and it's letting more current through, that means these output transistors will get warmer. And um, I'm going to start backing that off a little tiny bit. Not much, not that much. I'll do. This is a process that might take you five or six minutes, and if it seems like it's going to take that amount of time, I'll just uh, I'll have to just skip through a little bit of the video. Right, to, to save time, it shouldn't be taking too long. But the nice thing about it is, like I said, there was one mistake that I saw, um, so I corrected that, and uh, well, we're good. We're good. I'm quite, uh, I'm quite pleased with that. It set out quite nicely. It set out quite nicely, and we don't seem to be. I'll tell you one thing that's nice to see is that we're not climbing too quickly. Which to me means that nothing's getting too warm too quickly. You know, current's not like shooting through this too quickly. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a little look at this, and we're just going to see what we get over here, and see what the actual uh, what the what the millivolts is. Now, it's supposed to be you get 1.5 milliamps to a millivolt, right? So if we want about 75 milliamps on there, we want about 50 millivolts. Yeah, it doesn't have to be, it, it doesn't have to be exact. Yeah, somebody wants my attention. It doesn't have to be exact, um, but it's got to be, you know, sort of pretty close. 75 milli, uh, milliamps is, is a nice sort of quiescent current. So if I go through on here, what have we got there? We've got 50. Yeah, it's counting down 46. Now I can't leave those in there like that. We're on 78. So if I were to take that up just a little bit more, um, I think we're about in the ballpark where we want to be. The 50 millivolts, yeah? So, I mean, that is okay. The way that is set is pretty much okay, but I'm just going to give it a little... No, I don't think I am. I'm going to say that's going to be okay, because once this has been warming up for another further few minutes, uh, <laughs> he's jumping about out here because he wants my attention. Uh, once that's, you know, as you can see, it's, it's gone up uh, one milliamp on the, uh, on the negative side of the channel. But once it gets there, I'm going to say that's going to be in the right ballpark, the right sort of area, and we're good. This thing is ready uh, for me to basically start doing some tests on it and see what sort of power we can get out of it and how clean it's going to be. Because we can't really do that with the way it's set up here. Um, but we can do it in the next video. Guys, if you got this far, thank you very much, and thank you so much for being, you know, there through the entire like little mini series of this going on. Um, one quick check because we've gone up by a couple of a couple of milliamps, and let's just see if we are a bit closer to that 50 millivolt on here. Oh, let's make sure we get that plugged into the right one. So I'm going into the collectors. There we go. Look, look at that. 49. 49. And it's good for plus or minus, you know, five milliamps, uh, millivolts. It's not too bad, but that gives us about uh, 70. It's supposed to be 75, but as you can see over there, it's saying it's a bit different. But by the time you take into account of, uh, you know, accuracy and all that sort of stuff, but it's just about there. But this is what I'd normally use. And let me just see if I can see it. I can. On the other one, underneath my, underneath my table, I've got one of these. And so I let it get because here's the 100 milliamps, 200 milliamps, 400, 800, and when this thing kicks, it's bam, 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 you know, cracking across this one amp when you got it turned up. But generally for listening, it sits about 80 milliamps. And that's when you can just listen to it in the room quite happily, it's pretty good. Uh, but when you start turning it up, yeah, you start drawing a bit of current. And it will quite happily draw that one amp, because if you think about it, it's uh, sort of like 35, Watts on a side, so you get about sort of, you know, sort of 70 watts out of it nicely. And at 35 volts, 70 watts is a one amp. 35 volts a side, so you've got a 70 volt swing. One amp, 70 watts. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.